In this next series of videos, labeled as 4.3 point something, we develop the concept of confidence intervals. Here is a list of what we have. In this video, this one, we will first review some basic probability for normal distributions and the distribution of sample means. This material is was covered in unit uh, three, so this is review material. In the next video, we will introduce confidence intervals. Following that, we have videos which work through one sample Z interval estimate for the mean of a population, finding the needed sample size for a Z interval, and two videos with Z interval applications, and then finally we introduce calculator technology shortcuts for computing Z intervals using some built-in uh, programs on the TI calculators. So before we continue beginning developing the concept of confidence intervals, let's review just some of our earlier important work with normal probability distributions and sampling distributions. Recall that the probability density function, PDF, of a normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve which is symmetric about its mean. Its mean, median, and mode are all the same. Changing the mean, mu, shifts the graph horizontally, changing the center. The graphic here shows the graphs of several normal PDFs. All of these have standard deviation 1. They have means from negative uh, 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, 2, and 3, respectively, as labeled. Notice that the shape of these graphs is exactly the same but their locations are horizontally shifted uh, to center on the respective mean values. Recall that changing the value of the standard deviation, sigma, alters the spread. The lower the standard deviation, the less spread there is. In other words, the more the area is concentrated near the mean. Remember that the total area between any PDF curve and the x-axis is 1. So a normal PDF curve with a lower standard deviation will be taller and skinnier than the one with a larger standard deviation. Here we have graphed several normal PDF curves. They all have the same mean of zero. The least variable one has a standard deviation of one half. It's the tall skinny one here. And next is the red one. That's the standard normal with standard deviation of one. And then we have one of standard deviation two three and four and five and the bigger the standard deviation the more spread out it is. Given any normally distributed random variable x with mean mu and standard deviation sigma we can compute the probability of a less than x less than b by computing the areas between the graph of its PDF and the and the x-axis over the interval from, from A to B. We have shortcuts for this computation in some computer software and on some calculators. On a TI-84, for example, this is normal CDF A, comma B, comma mu, comma sigma, where A is the lower number, B is the higher number, mu is the mean, sigma is the standard deviation. And similarly, on a TI-Inspire, it's norm CDF uh, with the same inputs. If we compute z-scores for x values from the distribution above, the distribution of z-scores is normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. It is called the standard normal, or sometimes a z, distribution. Probabilities from a general normal curve are the same as the probabilities between the corresponding z-scores from the standard normal curve. If x has a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then the probability that a is less than x is less than b, probably that x is between a and b, is given by normal CDF of a comma b comma mu comma sigma. This is the same as the probability that z is between the corresponding z scores. So this equals um, the probability that z is between a minus mu all divided by sigma up to b minus mu all divided by sigma. 
this is where Z has a standard normal distribution. So on a TI-84, this is as notated here. Here we see the illustration that these two probabilities are the same. The graphs here were generated using the statistical program Minitab. The top graph shows the probability that X is between 3 and 9 as a shaded area under the PDF where X is from a normal distribution with mean 5 and standard deviation 2. In the bottom graph we get to see a standard normal distribution PDF with the area shaded between the two Z scores corresponding to the X values of 3 and 5. Uh, notice that these were computed right here in the uh, by this formula here, the X value of the lower 3 minus the mean of 5 divided by the standard deviation 2 to get a, a z-score of negative 1, which is right here. And similarly, we take the upper 1 to 9, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation to get the z-score of the bottom. Notice that the area here in red, either place, is the same. So this one is a normal CDF from 3 to 9 with a mean of 2, 5 and standard deviation of 2, whereas this is a standard normal CDF from negative 1 to 2, that is mean 0, standard deviation 1, we get exactly the same value. The standard normal distribution is sometimes known as the Z distribution since it is, since it is the distribution of Z scores from any normal distribution. The standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. The graph of its PDF is a bell-shaped curve symmetric about the mean of zero, in other words, symmetric about the y-axis. Since it is perfectly symmetric, its skewness is zero. Note that the probability that z is less than zero is one-half, which equals 0.5, which equals 50%. The probability that z is greater than zero is also one-half. The mean, median, mode are all zero for a standard normal distribution. Standard deviation is one for the standard normal distribution. Let's review some TI-84 shortcuts for normal distributions. We use normal PDF to get the graph of the bell-shaped PDF curve. This is not usually necessary. We use normal CDF to compute probabilities. We find normal CDF under distribution second variables. The syntax is given here. So, for example, to compute the probability between A and B, we enter normal CDF of uh, a comma b comma mean comma standard deviation if we leave out the mean and standard deviation the calculator assumes we want a standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and standard deviation of one here's a screenshot showing the calculation of the probability that x is between three and nine for a normal distribution with mean four and standard deviation two notice that the, you will get this wizard when you push um, uh, normal CDF on the uh, most of the TI-84 uh, calculators and you just simply plug in these four numbers here and paste. If you have a TI-83 or some older TI-84s you may need to actually just you don't get this thing over here on the left you have to get this one on the right so you have to memorize the order it's lower upper mean standard deviation. Luckily, the calculator also has a shortcut for computing inverse probabilities for a normal distribution as well. For example, suppose that we have a random variable x, which has a normal distribution with mean of 8 and standard deviation of 2. We want to find the 75th percentile. That is, we want to find the value of x such that the probability that x is less than that a a or x value is 0.75. For this we use the function inverse norm. The order of the inputs is cumulative probability, that is the probability to the left or the area under the PDF curve to the left of the desired value, then the mean, and finally the standard deviation. Newer TI-84s will have the middle screen and older ones will directly go to the final screen.
So under distributions, that's number three. Area is the probability to the left, mean and standard deviation. Paste, you get this, and, and enter, and it gives you the answer. So the A or X value that we're looking for here is about 9.35. All right, so now it's time for you to practice this a little bit. Use a TI-84, TI-Inspire, or similar technology to compute the following probabilities and inverse probabilities for a random variable X with a normal distribution with mean 35 and standard deviation 3. Show all the digits produced by the calculator. Work these uh, five problems out yourself, and then come back and check your answers against the next slide. Press pause now. Here are the answers along with screenshots of the calculations using a TI-84. Pause on this screen if you need to to make sure you have these and to uh, check your inputs in your calculator and the answers that you end up getting. Now, suppose we have a random variable x with a normal distribution with mean 35 and standard deviation 3. Now, suppose that we take a sample of size 9 from this distribution and record the sample means, x bar, from this sample. Note that if we were to repeat this process, then the distribution of sample means would have its own distribution. Use a TI-84 or similar technology to compute the following probabilities and inverse probabilities. Show all digits produced by the calculator. Press pause now. Well, what type of distribution is the distribution of sample means? Well, since the distribution of individuals is normal, the distribution of sample means is also exactly normal. What's the mean of the distribution of sample means? Well, that'll be the same as the mean of the individuals. So in this case, it is uh, 35. What's the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means? The standard deviation of the distribution of sample means, sometimes known as the standard error of the mean, is the standard deviation of the distribution of individuals divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, sigma of the x bars is sigma of x divided by square root of n. n is 9, so that's 3 divided by square root of 9, which is 1. So the standard deviation there is 1. So the standard deviation of the original was 9. No, that was the sample size. Standard deviation was 3. And that's this black curve here. And the red curve is the one with the smaller standard deviation of only 1. That's the distribution of the x bar values. Black, wider one, shorter and wider, is the distribution of individual values and the taller, skinnier, more area near the mean, that one is a distribution of sample means. Okay, so now we go back to our um, problems, and we see now that we can work these pretty easily. So the probability that x bar is between 30 and 32 is just a normal CDF going from lower 32, 30 to an upper 32, the mean is our 35, but the standard deviation here is not the 3, but rather the 1. It's the 3 divided by the square root of the sample size. But with that in mind, we can pretty easily work this out. We get that. For uh, a 0.00134968.01. So what about the probability that x bar is less than 30? Well... It's really you need to put negative infinity for lower, but we can't do that on our TI-84. So we need to put a different number there. And I've always told you you can use mean minus 10 standard deviations for the lower. And uh, here I can use that, which is, uh, well, it's pretty close to uh, pretty close to zero. Could just use zero there. Would have worked pretty well. And, uh, well, pretty close to zero for the answer. The mean minus 10 standard deviations 
uh, I just I didn't even figure it out. I just typed it in like that. But if I wanted to figure it out, what would that be? It would be 30. Uh, now the mean is what? 35. 35 minus 10 times 3. 10 times 3 is 30. 35 minus 30 is 5. So this is this is basically just 5 right here. If you'd rather go down to 0, that would be fine. So anyway, remember this e negative 7 at the end says that we have, uh, we start with a point, six zeros, and then a 2, counting for the 7 decimal place we move to the left. So similarly, we want to find the probability that x is greater than 38. That's really from 38 on to infinity, but we said instead of infinity, we can put the mean plus 10 times the standard deviation, which I just wrote as m plus 10s, having stored 35 as m and 1 as s. Or we could just work it out. Um, let's see. 35 plus 10 times s. 10 times s is uh, 3 times 10 is 30, plus 35 is 65. So if you want to put just 65 here, that works pretty good. So we're not saying that there's not any probability above 65. We're saying that probability is so small it will not show up in these digits, so it doesn't affect our answer, which in this case was 0 0.00134996672. So those three problems were probability problems. The next two are inverse probability problems. In number seven, we're given that the probability to the left of C is 0 0.05. What is C? It's going to be an X bar value so that the probability to the left is 0 0.05. Well, that's just an inverse norm. When it asks you for area, give it the probability to the left, which we know is 0 0.05, and give it the mean and standard deviation that you have, and it will give you that um, x value, which is 33.35514637. The next one, it works very similarly, except they throw a small wrinkle in. They're giving you the probability that x bar is greater than c, that's to the right of c, is 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 1%. And so to first, you need to find out what the probability is to the left, which is 1 minus that. 1 minus 0 0.01 is 0 0.99, or 99%. And so then when we do an inverse norm, it asks for the area. That's what you give it, 0 0.99. And then we give it the mean and standard deviation. And in this case, we get 37.3. Two six three four seven eight eight. 